this is taking all the power of a marketplace, and in a digital form, we're taking marketplaces that existed and making them more efficient. And we're taking marketplaces that never would have uh, been possible in the physical world and bringing them to life. Take a, a blog site like Engadget. It never had a big enough audience to be a newsstand printed thing. The cost structure, the, the, the sparsity of the people who would read that, uh, they, they would have failed. But online, they have a very low cost structure. They've got an audience of, of a few hundred thousand, not paying much at all, but it all, all works. And so, yes, every time somebody says they like one of Chad's videos or they tag uh, one of Katrina's photos, they are expressing a judgment. And we still have some work to do in terms of reputation to filter out people who try and play with these things. But even without that, these systems work surprisingly well. Even search, a huge part of the input there is you see who, when somebody gets a result, if they click on it, do they spend much time there? Do they scroll the page? So actually that dynamic behavior is feeding back and making the search engine better. And the way you present information, you're constantly taking your customer's input and, may, and changing uh, what it is that you offer. Today, with, if you own a physical copy of something, you don't worry as much that when you move to a different device or you buy a new one, that all of a sudden it won't be available. And so the whole digital rights thing, there's certainly technological innovation so that you know if you buy a song, a movie, a book, that on all your devices, it, you'll have it, you'll never lose it, you can mess up your machine, forget to back it up, and you still won't lose all of that. So that is very solvable, uh, that can get done. Making it work across manufacturers, which you can call that the iTunes problem, uh, that's a, a tricky problem. Uh, that's probably uh, solvable. Getting the right ease of use and yet the enforcement piece, that's a tricky balance and there's going to have to be some creativity and work to make sure that that's done well because you never can inconvenience users. And right now MP3s are the convenient way to, to deal with music. Yeah, I, I must say, I, I, I find this a, a difficult one to wrestle with. I, I, since iTunes, and no offense, Bill, um, I, I'm buying ten times more music than I used to because it's so much easier. You are the one person uh, that's buying more music. Congratulations. Oh. Mm, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I, I, I know lots of folks are buying more music no. now as a result. If our, the next buzzword we pick is Web 3.0. That, that shows a lack of creativity and buzzwords. Uh, <laughs> I, I think we need a whole different word. Uh, now, it'll come at an artificial point in time with an artificial definition, but certainly as you, as you get 3D as part of the experience, as you get speech as part of the experience, as you overthrow the, the think textbooks have to be on paper, periodicals have to be on paper, TV is a broadcast medium, as you radically change those things, and you make this matching of buyers and sellers more and more efficient, then we've got to have some demarcation where we go, wow, because even though it's year by year, the, the sum of the effect as you know, broadband gets cheaper, young people are more comfortable with this thing, just every device, phones, games, PCs, all connected to it, uh, it it's such a small percentage of what it will be. So I'd say we have room uh, in the next 10 years for at least four more buzzwords. Well, the, there's many kinds of advertising, all of which are going to uh, grow dramatically on the, the web. The thing that is the most valuable is seeing the person at the time they're thinking of doing a purchase. And the example that was given here of you go on to a, uh, search for an auto, and then a few hours later you're watching TV, that that's the uh, ad you're shown. That is very powerful. You know, there are clicks like uh, personal inj injury law firm uh, that are worth $60, $70. In New York, $120. Uh, Lasix, mortgage. You know, if you see people in that context, the chance of doing a piece of business that today is still fairly high profit is high enough that they really want to own that context. Now that's different than ads that are inserted in, in videos because uh, you're, you're just not as focused on what's going on there. We are going to see an explosion of creativity in advertising and uh, this is a place where 
Microsoft is behind at least one other uh, company, and uh, so uh, we're, we, 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 we're putting our we, mention, we try huh? harder uh, techniques <laughs> into motion. So we won't mention Google. Uh, question down here. Today, TV is still a broadcast infrastructure, and there's a hybrid where you go on your PC, you get the flexibility of YouTube, and uh, you have editing tools, but that's separate from what you watch on TV. If somebody goes with an HD camera to your kid's basketball game and films it, you have to go find it. But because TV is moving to be delivered over the Internet, and some of the big phone companies are building out the infrastructure for that, uh, you're going to have that experience all together. And once video gets on the Internet, the ability to just see the news you want, the ads are personalized, the educational stuff is far more interactive, it becomes very different than it's been in broadcast. The tools to do authoring are, are very key here. We want people to write things like a math course, uh, you know, take clips off the web, make it, uh, put the quiz part in, give feedback in there. We want every teacher, every student to have those tools. And so we've made progress in the tools, and that's partly what uh, has moved us forward. We need 3D. We're seeing it on things like Xbox, where you have Xbox Live for 3D. Why 3D? Well, 3D, as it turns out, the world is in 3D. Uh, and we, we used to have only uppercase, and then we got lowercase. That was fun. Then we went from uh, black and white, and we got this color thing. That was fun. And in fact, 3D, you see a glimpse of it. It's going to happen. Uh, you see it with things like virtual earth, where you're walking around a city. You see it in Second Life, where you know, it's still a little clunky, and trying to put it all in one place and have a, a set of rules for one place isn't right. You want tools so every company, every individual can build that. When I want to walk through a store, I don't just want a 2D listing. I want the store that was designed for me, that I run into books of interest. Or one, if I go through that, that virtual earth map, I want to be able to walk into the store, uh, see exactly what that's like. And the only thing holding that back is, uh, are the tools.